when you're not shaving your balls, it doesn't make me want to go down there and take a face full of long pubes. It's not going to like get things plug your ears if you don't like this word, moist. I've had to have conversations with him where I'm like, when's the last time you showered, Max? And he's like, four days ago. I'm like, okay, that is not okay. We need to shower at least every other day. Just give me every other day, I'll take it. Welcome guys to episode two of, um, I'm not sure what this podcast is called, but uh, my other podcast is Nancy AF, Nancy Anderson Fit or Nancy As Fuck. So I haven't decided it's in the eyes of the viewer. So whatever you want it to be, maybe we'll come up with a more clever name eventually here, but Should welcome. Like fit or fat, fit and fat. That's our, Speaking of that's our dynamic. people on Instagram, love your Instagram handle, which is Max Anderson Fat. And I am Nancy Anderson Fit. And they just think that's like hilarious. I get, I get like comments all the time about it. <laughs> but um, how do you feel after your first, big debut in the first podcast yeah it feels good yeah well, i haven't listened to it yet but yeah it's it's funny to me like watching you just like turn it on like because i always hear you shoot content in your room, here. You're like, let's fucking go and you're do you like, want to achieve anything yeah. in this life and it's on the line right now yeah. and carver was like telling me that leo said that you say the f word in when you're when you're shooting so he thinks he thinks it's okay to say it too <laughs> and uh Oops. But yeah, you just turn it on. You're good at it. I mean, it's, you've always been natural. Like when yeah. you see a star, you should say something. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying We're not something. telling that story, okay? <laughs> no, I love I'm performing. Saying. It's my favorite thing that I do. In fact, I want to free up more and more of my time to only do creative content because that's really what I was born to do, guys. It just I have to put on my business and organizational hat, but I don't like necessarily love that. I lo I really love being creative. So I'm just getting all the people in the right place to delegate more responsibility to which brings me to um a good point which is you know i always being like the face of the brands and stuff you know you always get like all the praise or all the bullets depending on what's going on if something bad happens it's your fault if something good happens it's you that did it you know when really um there's a lot of people behind the scenes that should get a lot of that credit because luckily the praise far 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 outweighs the bullets but max is like that person he was always hiding behind the curtain Never gets any of the credit, but deserves quite a lot of it. And he genuinely doesn't care about getting that credit. But I'm glad to put you on at least this stage and let you shine for the people. Yeah, thanks. I genuinely don't care. Like, yeah. I don't. I, I, I started what I was saying earlier. Like, two things. One, it's wild to me that people think that, like, one person, like, does it all. Like, that's just, like. That's such a bizarre thought. Like, there's nothing in anyone's life where they have evidence to support that's true. Yeah. But if they look on social or, like, uh, some fame or whatever, it's like, oh, this person is, like, just created everything. It's like, well, f of course they're not. And two, it's like, it's such a better place to be. I mean, like, for me, it's like, it's like yeah. that's, I can do so much more. I can have a, such a bigger impact. It's, I've never looked at that side and been like, oh, yeah, that would be really nice. Like, I didn't, I've never looked at you like, been like, wow, I'd really love to be in Nancy's shoes. I'm like, no, no, I'm actually <laughs> super content with where I sit. Heavy lies the crown is like a very true and accurate quote. Yeah. And it's about a lot of things, too. It's, you know, it's everyone needs a team. Like, life is a team sport. Business is a team yeah. sport. Like, there's nothing anyone's ever done that involved just them. Like, even like, you know. Britney Spears. Solo athletes. Yeah, well, that's example. what I was. But I use that Britney Spears analogy with you a lot, although I hate reasoning by analogy. But like, because I love her. Yeah, but you understand, like, what was I the analogy it. I use with her? It's like, it's like she's not Britney Spears. Doesn't give a fuck about who's planning the truck, like where trucks are going yeah. where and how the sets. Or who's been. packaging her perfume or yeah. whatever. She's just like picking the fragrance, and then probably I don't know who knows. Probably not even that. But, but like, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, I I get it. It's true. But for a long time, it was hard for me to like accept that. You know, like I'm just a very independent sport person, like marathon runner, <laughs> like fitness competitor. Like it's it relies on one person, you and only you. And yeah. you can control your performance. You can control your training. And therefore, you can really control your outcome. That doesn't work on a team sport. Like you have to rely on your teammates to carry some of the weight and to show up and practice and be disciplined and participate and contribute. I don't like those kind of sports because yeah, <laughs> I can't control the outcome yeah. nearly as much. So it was a big kind of learning curve. And I had to take a while to kind of realize like it's okay to – you know, let other people trust them to like get the job done or trust them to also coach as good as you or in a different way than you do. And now I'm like, I'm fine with it. And I've kind of come like full circle where I'm like, 
yeah, like I don't want to do this or this or this anymore. Like you guys are capable. You handle that. Like I don't want to have anything to do with human resources or like hiring or like whatever. Like yeah. You guys are capable. You know what we're looking for. You can do it, you know. And I feel really good about the people that we have at the top being able to do that right now. So I'm super thankful for it because I really just want to be doing this stuff. Like I just, I'm a, I just want to be doing creative. Yeah. Really. Well, it's, it's all in your control, right? Like it's like when you, and I always say this all the time. It's like, you know, you have to make a decision. Do you want to be rich or do you want to be King? Right. And that's not a monetary thing. Like, but it's, Hey, do you want to have a control and say over every little thing, which is being uh King? Or do you want to be rich, which means essentially delegating those things and being more productive and building a team that could, you know, go further if you go together. And it is – I mean, I, did, I struggle with – everyone struggles with it, right, at different scales because I do the same. We talk about this all the time, yeah. offloading more of my role. And it's like I'm doing so many things where it's like, fuck, why am I doing this? Like I would kill to have someone else come in and do this. But you say, hey – these are irregular tasks. They're not repetitive. There's, you know, you, you, you create, create this story, right? And your story yeah. is the more I do it, the more control I have over it. Where, I mean, I would argue that the control is a little bit of an illusion when it comes to managing bigger teams and stuff. Um, and there's a lot r- more randomness that goes into it. The more people that are added into the mix. Yeah, it definitely is a struggle, I think. But with like you delegating some of your work, it's, a little difficult because you have like this very different brain and all your stuff is really a project based. Like you're always doing new innovative problem solving or new innovative technology or solutions to improve, you know, products and apps and whatever. Me, I just have to, I have to find people that have a baseline knowledge and then train them up to get to the level that I need them to be at, to teach them our protocols and how we implement things. And then they just need to go continue to deliver that to the other clients. And that's much, it's hard to find, don't get me wrong, really, really hard to find, but easier than. It's more task oriented. Yeah. Yeah, Correct. It's just a different size of the business. Yeah. When I think, and the the biggest thing just kind of mental, because there's a lot of mental changes and I don't think people really realize that, like. It's it's your mentality as a leader that really affects the entire organization, and it, and, it, and it trickles down from the t- from the top to the bottom. But which is like of- so much pressure, by the way. Yeah. It's like I don't, I'm just doing my best here, but then it's like all this pressure. I'm like, well, what does Nancy say? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it is a lot of pressure because there's different personality types on your team, and then you have to basically treat people a little bit differently based off of that personality type. Like if you have someone that you know it really takes things to heart and is a little bit more sensitive and you have to be careful with how you deliver feedback or criticism or even how you're moving people around and tasks that are surrounding that person or you know some people just <clears throat> want it laid out like christina she's like just tell me how it is like take the emotion out of it be very transparent mm-hmm. and she's not going to get her feelings hurt and I love that about her yeah, she's like a true Capricorn. <laughs> and honestly, she, I need someone like that because she counter she balances me out very well. Well, you need someone like that that's not me. Yeah. I'm that way too. Max it's is not, exactly it's like that. It's not okay when I do it, but it's okay when she does it. Yeah, because she is a Capricorn with a feminine touch. Ugh. And I just feel like that makes like such a big difference. You know, it's like he's a, a Capricorn with a mass, very masculine alpha touch. And Christina's very alpha too. But she gets it. Like she, we we communicate very well together. I'm just so like I just love her so much. She probably doesn't even know how much I love her. I try to tell her, but no, she does. Yeah, she's like she's really amazing. I'm just and she started with me in the slim down. She was a client in the slim down, and that's how four years ago she came to be. And now she runs the all the businesses with us, which is really cool. Um, but we did have some topics that I wanted to touch on that I was just like. A little potpourri, a little potpourri okay. action. Um, first things first, people are asking, if you can't hear, my, you probably can't yeah. hear it, but my youngest is over there screaming. Okay. Yeah, oh, he's crying. Oh, he's no, crying. here we go. Yeah. People want uh, to know about, like, I got, I got a nose job for those of you guys that don't know. I was very honest about getting it because... One, everyone was going to know. And if I didn't say anything, I, you know, I would get like attacked online or whatever. So I just was very honest from the beginning. Like, I'm going to do this. I've thought about it for a really long time and I'm doing it. So I did get a nose job and um, people want to know what you think about it. Like, I get DMs every day. Does Max 
notice the difference with your nose? Is he on board? Because a long time ago, I remember I said something to you about wanting to get a nose job and you were kind of like, oh, like, get out of here. Like your nose is perfect. Don't do that kind of thing. And kind of like was not really on board with it. This is like a long time ago. I don't even know if you remember this conversation. But and I was kind of like internally like, oh, darn, like he's never going to like be cool with it, you know, because he just really is, is very cute. But he really loves me like organically me. No makeup, no tanner, like white as can be just like in my natural state, which I'm like, uh, OK, but I love that you love me like that. So if I, I get I like, just wish you loved yourself like that. I do. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. No. So uh, here's the thing. That's my reaction, right? So like for me, it's like. So I think there's a couple layers to unpack here. One. Waving to my kids. Uh, I love your sunglasses, oh, Leo. Bye, um, guys. See you, babe. Um, one. I I don't care. Like it, it, it's your, your physical appearance has never You're been. You're telling them, not me. No, but, no, but I'm saying like when like I your physical appearance has never been something that I was like, oh, like this is the primary reason that I'm interested in this person. Can I stop though? That, right there. Yeah, sure. He always says this. Like I do a lot of self care and I like want my body to like look and feel and function a certain way, and I put in as much work as needed to like achieve those goals for myself. And he always says like, Oh, I don't care. Like, you know, if you look like this or you looked like 30 pounds heavier or you didn't have any muscle, you know, whatever. And I just like, don't don't buy that. that. Like, I think you would, I'm never that specific, but well, he's just like in general, like, I don't care what size you are. I don't care what you look like. And I just don't buy that. But you say that to me, but you expect me to buy it though. That's interesting. Did you say the same thing I say? I, I 100% have said stuff to you. Like, Okay, if you want to really open the book here, Max's um, hygiene isn't always, like, where I need it to be, to be, like, really attracted to him. Like, when you're not shaving your balls, it doesn't make me want to go down there and take a face full of long pubes. Like, it's just not something that gets my vagina going. Your running? No, yeah. It's not going to, like, get things, plug your ears if you don't like this word, moist. Let me, let me make a list of things I need to do. So I've had to have conversations with him where I'm like, when's the last time you showered, Max? And he's like, four days ago. I'm like, okay, that is not okay. We need to shower at least every other day. Just give me every other day. I'll take it. You know what I mean? Are you going to shave your balls and, like, your pubic area? You know? It just doesn't happen. And... Again, facial hair, fine if he wants to do the beard thing. It's not necessarily my top thing. Like, I like a little scruff, and that's it. That's what's sexiest to me on men. But the beard has grown on me. But what I can't stand is when he doesn't groom the beard. He just looks like... I mean, uh, in all fairness, I started sh- I started shaving my beard, getting it done, and I haven't went back. Okay. But how long did you have yeah, the beard? Previously before that. How long did you yeah. have the beard yeah. before you started grooming it? Yeah, it was, it was too long. Yeah. Over I, I, I've since apologized. Over a year? I've since apologized. <laughs> After seeing myself in videos shooting shooting looms for our team. With like, I'm like hairs Lord, coming up like gross. in front of his eyes. Yeah, like what like, is going on? And it's, it's like not, yeah, not a cool look. When you're overgrowing your when you're literally chewing on your mustache but hairs. Is, I just don't care. Like that stuff doesn't like that doesn't like I but don't think about I, like, how does this look? Like No, I know that you don't. Yeah. Trust me, I know that you don't. Uh, or think or, about or it. how does this smell? I don't think about it. <laughs> don't get me started on the smells. Don't get me started on the smells. But like I have well, had to have interventions. <laughs> yeah. I've had to have interventions with him. It's like, listen, if you want to, you know, not focus on diet and fitness and be whatever weight, I love you no matter what. My only like thing is I want you to be healthy so you can live a long time and you can be mobile and have the lifestyle that we live, which is very active. And I'm completely transparent with that. And a lot of people ask me this because, you know, they see that maybe Max isn't like as into fitness and nutrition as I am or hasn't consistently That's been. Not a fair benchmark. <laughs> well, yeah, but I like, know, you know, I'm a lot of times you see right. these fitness couples and like they yeah. both have six packs and they're both jacked and they're yeah. both like doing couple workouts all the time. And, and they that just... have to be the most fucking annoying people to be around <laughs> ever. Can you imagine? 
No. Seriously. Every time I see two people that are fit, I'm like, you guys are fucking, no, you have no friends. And you only your friends are at the gym. Like, seriously. I had a couple that yeah. I dated with, or not dated with, a couple that I knew <laughs> in, uh, I'll never forget whenever I was at Nike, and there was this couple, there was this, like, a girl, and she was really attractive, and a bunch of the guys had a crush on her, and she Did had Did you sleep boyfriend. with her? No, no. Um, she was, she had a boyfriend and they were like super into health and fitness and they were the most obnoxious people to ever be. Yeah. Like meal like, prepping together. Yeah. You like talking to my 12 like, eggs. you guys are fucking made for each other. Yeah. Like, it's like, I hope like any couple that are super into one thing, I just like get really leery about that because like surely there's going to be a certain point that you're going to want to do something else. Like if you're really into like a cause or like really, really into sex and that's your thing. It's like, well, surely like. At some point, you're yeah, going to hop off the maybe. bandwagon. You're going to have like a mix of things. Like people just make their entire personality like what they're into. And I think that's just really annoying. Like, Yeah, and that's something that's not me. I mean, the yeah, thing is, is fitness is a huge yeah, part of my life. Yeah. Um, but I think people envision me like – working out 10 hours yeah. a week and yeah. like I'm going here and I'm doing this and I'm like measuring out every serving size on my plate. And it's like, there was one point in time where I did do that stuff like a long time ago when I was like learning nutrition. I didn't know portion sizes, but like I eyeball all my portion sizes. I eat like, you know, I follow my own protocols, but I do intuitively kind of choose what I'm going to eat. I don't like follow some rigid structured, whatever. Um, Although I am a creature of habit, I eat like the same salad every day for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Salmon salad with dates and vinaigrette. Um, but people do ask like, how does it work between us? Listen, I love Max for like who he is. My only, like I wouldn't even say is an issue, but just something that I would, I encourage him to work on is just his relationship with food and his relationship with fitness because so I was never a collegiate athlete. Max was. He was a Division One football player. He doesn't like when I talk about it. That's two episodes. We're two, we're two for two. This is I'll great. bring it up every That's, podcast. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, pr I'm proud of that. I mean, it's really difficult to be a Division One athlete, especially a football player. And he, those people, I mean, you're training at some of the highest levels. I mean, either D1 it's or extreme. you're going to the NFL. You know, it's... It's extreme and you live it, eat it, breathe it. You're watching film. You're doing it's your whole entire life is consumed with this sport, you know, and over time, which he played for ever since like fifth or sixth grade or something, which I got really, you know, he started getting really serious in high school, I think. But he um, you get like certain things like drilled into you where it's like it's all about performance. It's all about how heavy or like how fast or whatever. And yeah, it's never about longevity. It's all about availability. Yes. And yeah. once you leave, you're left with kind of this skewed, unhealthy perspective or relationship or expectation of like what fitness should be in your life or or what eating is. I mean, he had to like gain all this weight to play in college and it was all about like it's just opposite of what you want really to have behavior patterns and thought mentalities when you're coming, you're, com you're, you're coming into adulthood and you're thinking, how am I going to live a long, healthy, functional life? You know? So it's really taken him a long time to shift perspective from performance based fitness to functional fitness, injury prevention, like, and that's, I'm really proud of him because the last several months he's really kind of made a, a shift, I think for the first time ever, because usually he kind of, he'll go performance based, start doing CrossFit or something that's like really intense. It doesn't feel good. He's got a ton of injuries, old in injuries. He's very imbalanced and he'll never be able to not be imbalanced because of some of the extreme injuries he's had. So he has to be careful with what he can do, what primal movements he's doing, what kind of load he's doing. Um, and he always ends up getting re-injured because he goes back to this old way of thinking and moving. Sorry, I'm like totally speaking for you here, but I think it's accurate. <laughs> well, it's your podcast. And then, <laughs> and he, he, anyway, so I'm really proud of you because you have really made a shift. But those are the things. Yeah, grooming, smells, having like mustache hair grow to your bottom lip and I don't want to make out with you and then you're offended that I'm not into you. Well, I fucking wonder why I'm not into you. So I don't want to like make out with you. I, I could smell your lunch on your upper lip. I mean, it's not the hottest thing, yeah. but he always says that he doesn't care about what I would going back to what I was really trying to say was he always says he doesn't care about what I look like. I think that's bullshit. I think that he's totally turned on by how I take care of my body and the way that I look. And 
you just say that because you love me. I mean, you would still love me, but like you like me. You're a little more attracted to me with this body than you would be if I just like let it go and stopped caring and gained 25 pounds and was soft and didn't work out. I mean, I, that's not to me, that's not attractive when someone's not taking care of their own body. Yeah, but I would view that. So I guess I, I view everything boils down to just mental health, like your your mentality. Yeah. So like, yes, I'd, I'd say they're they're linked because if you were to let yourself go, you mentally would not be the same place you're at right now no so you know whatever it takes for you to be mentally the best is to me what's the appealing like i'm just so like stimulated by like that yeah like uh like intellectual and not like oh you have to be really smart but like like what your thoughts are like i'm just genuinely uninterested in like people's weight like skin color, like they're they're who they like to sleep with, like like what their favorite color is, like those things are very and 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 those well, unless you like sleep of, with minors or something, then I have a problem well, with you. Yeah, well, sure, that's a don't break any laws. Specification, but yeah, no, sure. There, there's like caveats we could make for all things, yeah. right? But but in terms of like that, it's like I just am so much more interested in what people think um, than anything. I mean, that to me is like very stimulating. So like I look back, I'm like the like. This space like that, and it's like 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 back on date nights. They're like a really good conversation. Like to me, that's like oh, that's awesome. But if I was like oh, this date would have been better if Nancy dropped ten pounds. I'm like I never said that. Like if she had like less wrinkles. No, in her I think forehead, it's more of a like, subconscious ah, thing. It's like when he starts grooming himself and taking care of yeah, his body, of I'm just yeah. naturally a little bit more attracted to him. Yeah, correct. And I just want to have sex like a little bit more. Speaking of date nights, I scheduled a date night for us on Friday. We're going out to dinner. All right, third. There's the third. <laughs> All right. What? Third yeah, what? Yeah. He's like, Something I negative. He's going to say negative. It this morning. Yeah, I'm like, hey, what's the play? I plan this. Okay, girls no, like this night. No, girls like that no, night. no, They can no. strip this night with girls. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I I'm planned like, this out oh. two days ago. I asked Carmen oh, earlier you, this week. You just failed to mention it to me? Yeah, I haven't oh, mentioned it. Okay. I've actually forgotten until you just brought up date night. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Now. Yeah. But yeah, my sister's coming in town. And it's just been like a crazy like summer so far. Like, let's just talk about that for a sec because it kind of leads me into like the whole nutrition thing with kids, which I think we should talk about a little oh, bit. Yeah, sure. So just to give you guys some like backgrounds, we have a couple like really good friends that um, live here around in Newport Beach, California. We've been friends with them forever. Like we were pregnant with our uh, like Kenzie, when I was pregnant with Kenzie, my other two friends are pregnant as well at the same time. We had babies at the same time. We've done everything together. We vacationed together. Like we've just been friends forever and we're like really close. And we found out like not that long ago, like a couple months ago that for sure, we knew they were thinking about it, but for sure they're moving out of state to Tennessee. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, we only have eight weeks left with them before they like live in a different state really far away. And we've just been saying like, yes, to like every social event, we've been making extra like girls nights, extra dinners, extra trips to like spend as much time with them and also let my kids spend as much time with their kids because basically our kids and their kids are like cousins essentially because they've been together like on and off, you know, or play dates and whatever since they were born they've known each other like literally they were born days and weeks apart and um it's just been like so sad like i would never they'll never listen to this podcast it doesn't matter but i'm like devastated i'm so sad my heart is like broken and it's fine because basically two of my best friends who have grew up together they were best friends ever since they were basically born they're like sisters you guys always message me when i post about them and you think that they're twins or they're sisters but they're not they're just best friends and they're both moving to Tennessee. I think I forgot to say that. So we found out not only one of our best friends are moving, but both of them are moving. All the kids obviously are going too. And it was just like super sad. So we've been saying yes to like everything. And while we're saying yes to everything, we've also been just letting nutrition just like slip with our kids because we want them to like have these like memories. We're going to like extra baseball games and whatever. So Kenzie has been really, he's tried soda for the first time, which I posted about. He tried that Mountain Dew. Remember, it was like a few months ago. We were in the desert and he stayed up all night. And then no more Mountain Dew. That's not allowed anymore. But he has been drinking like some Sprite. Now all of a sudden he wants to drink Sprite like every day. And I'm like, this is just getting out of control. You could just totally see how, I mean, I know I've done this for a long time with clients, but it's so easy to get addicted to sugar. And I'm like basically watching my kid get addicted to sugar because 
over the last like two months, we've just had event after event after it's event everywhere. after event. And it's everywhere at all these events. And I've been letting him indulge because his friends are indulging. And, you know, I've been indulging too. Not really necessarily with like sugar because I am so kind of restricted with what I eat. But with alcohol, for example, little weed gummies, whatever. <laughs> and getting after it. <laughs> Well, also, I'm planning for a pregnancy, so I'm just trying to get it in while I still can, you know? I know. It keeps getting pushed out. Yeah. We're getting pregnant next month, guys. Hmm. But I actually, I won't ever admit it until I'm past 20 weeks, so don't say anything if you think I look thick, okay? <coughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I thought that would be an interesting thing to just kind of chat about is, like, kids and food because... My oldest came to me yesterday and is like, hey, do I look like I'm gaining weight? That's what he asked me when he came into my room yesterday. And I'd never, you know, had to have a conversation like that. And um, the thing is, he has hit a big growth spurt, but he's grown everywhere. It's not like he's just like gaining weight necessarily. But, you know, he has hit a growth spurt. And I was like, why do you think that? you don't look like the way that you want to look, you know? And cause I'm not going to like answer that necessarily. And he's like, yeah, I just feel like, you know, I need to work on my posture, which is like crazy that he said that to me secretly. Like my heart, like my heart, like exploded secretly. He's like, I really just think I need to work on my posture because like I'm on my iPad, you know, sometimes. And I'm like, you know, this, and I just feel like I need to be more like this. And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, like, how do you know? that because like I don't drill this stuff into my kids you know but I they do know like what I do for a living is I help people work out and eat so that they can reach their goals that's essentially how I simplify it down for like Kenzie and he's like you know maybe I need to start eating a little bit healthier and I was so um, like I was so proud that that moment happened because it didn't I didn't have to say anything nor would I really know how to like approach that other than like we need to fuel our bodies for health you know which I try to do anyway but it was really um sort of interesting to hear him come to me like maybe I need to eat healthier and maybe I need to like work on my posture and sort of take initiative for that so then we started yesterday trying to like take away some of the treats and like so tell him about the game last night like was he going through like withdrawal do you think uh, but yeah he just asked me it's yeah it's interesting it's like it's such a it's such a social thing, you know. I think with him and food with most is people. such it's so so just like yeah. drinking. It's so social, like he does it. it we do it out of habit. Like it, go and he's like he's like you know. So we made had to stop and eat, and we were we were a little bit running a little bit behind. So then we go in, and he's like you know. Had I not known that you had that conversation with him, everything else, he, he still wants cotton candy. Oh, he really? was like, I want cotton candy. I want, uh, what's it called? He wanted um, Dippin' Dots. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. We'll get some popcorn because we'll get popcorn. And he wants some peanuts and, and waters and no Sprite and stuff like that. And, and he gets it. I mean, it's just very social. He expects like, oh, I've been here. I eat the Dippin' Dots. Like, this is where I eat them. Like, I eat yeah. them after football, and I eat them. Like, it would be weird if we were like, hey, do you want to go grab Dippin' Dots on a Tuesday? No, it's the games yeah. and it's sporting events. And in his mind, it's like that repetitive thing. But it's it's interesting because it's like it's hard to unwind it because it becomes it comes like expectation. Mm -hmm. And the expectations are tough to – that's where you can get disappointed. So he was um, – yeah, he's he's generally good with it. Like he doesn't go down the tubes a lot. He gets sad, and then he's like, oh, "I'll never talk to you again." And then like talking to me like two minutes later, and he forgets about it. And um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's because I equated to when I, when I talked to him about it too. Because I really struggle with food. Like, and I've always struggled with food. I've always. Do like, you want to talk a little I bit had, about like, your struggles? So, like, growing up, we got we had like uh, it's just weird to think about. So I'm 34, and growing up, whatever that would have been like. It, it, like the big emphasis was behind like clean plate awards. So I would get awards. I was like the top eater and I would clean my plate and I get prizes for cleaning my plate. And I'd have like these stickers. Like, hey, you cleaned your plate five times this week. And it would be up on my garage. Like it was like one of fucking trophy. I was like, look back. I'm like, we're fucking dropping dead like flies. Cause like of malnutrition. Surely. No. Right. Surely it had to been just some government interest. Like that was like, Oh yeah, we got to school lunches. Like they got to be affordable. So kids can get super fat. Like, I don't know. Oh, that's a long time ago. But 
and I just really struggled. I, 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 I stress eat. I'm a very big emotional eater. I use food as a source of pleasure, not as a source of fuel. But that's what I talked to him about. I'm like, listen, this is, you gotta, this is a decision you can make. But it's the same with technology. It's the same with everything. Like if you're out there and you're like, hey, I think the best way is to not give my kids their iPads. And it's like, that is dumb. Just the same as you're like, hey, no sugar inside Dude, the house. Dude, don't get me started like, on that. That is dumb. Like you, these things are ubiquitous in society. There's no escaping There's no social escaping media. Technology. There's no escaping sugar. Like you have to say, hey, here's what it is. I'm gonna put you in this. Like I'm gonna give you some guardrails. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the decision needs to be yours. So true. I mean, the technology thing sends me, guys, because oh, Jesus, dude. like I think people think I'm like this like crunchy. I don't know what that exactly means, but like people just expect me to like be making my own baby food for my kids and stuff. I'm like, I'm fucking working like yeah. full yeah. ass time. Division of labor like, I don't have guys. time for that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I am I, I'm very aware of the ingredients that are in our foods that we're buying and bringing into our house. I'm, I'm very aware of like the balance, but also. I know that if you restrict a child's nutrition or iPad use yeah. to the point where they feel deprived or they feel like they're missing out or they feel like they don't get to experience certain things, I think, and you know, you raise your kids however you want, like no big deal to me, but for my own kids, like I think you're setting that child up for like behavioral challenges later on where they're maybe going to have issues with food where they're going to binge or just completely go off the rails and stop eating healthy altogether because when they were little they never got to try soda they never got to have candy they never get to eat gluten or cakes or whatever it's like so then when they finally get the freedom to do it they go off the total deep end mm -hmm. um, and then I think it's the same thing with technology use, like I just find it so hilarious that people claim that iPads are like ruining this generation. And I'm like, let's think about like where the world was 20 years ago and where it is now and how yeah. there's so many people that are struggling to adapt and catch up with where technology is because we didn't have this stuff when we were a kid. This generation does have it. And the technology and the amount we rely on technology, I mean, literally, like, robots are coming, guys. Yeah. Like, you can't we, even imagine. You, next. we have, no. you, remember, this is what I said to my in laws actually, we were having a conversation about something like this the other day. It's like, remember 20 years ago? or however long it was, when dial-up internet was coming in and we were all kids and we were sitting on our computers waiting for someone to get off the phone line so that we could dial up through the phone line to get on the internet to like chat with our friends and like messenger or whatever we were doing and like chat rooms or whatever we were doing. Back then, if you would have like sat me down or sat anyone down and been like, hey, one day you're going to have a phone that's a really thin rectangle that you can carry around and reach the internet without dialing up. You'll just, it'll always be on. You'll always be able to use it whenever you want. You don't have to hear a sound. You don't have to do anything. It's just there all the time. And everything you do is going to be related to this, the internet. I would have never been able to imagine technology getting to that point. It would have seemed like magic to me because that's how far like down the road, it would seem like I can't even envision that. It's like commercial air travel to Mars. It seems so, it would have been so wild to think about that 10 years ago, but now it's like, it's probably going to happen. You know what I mean? So I think that when these parents have this perspective and I think of it as a lot of it's like fear based in the media. Yeah, it's lack of awareness. Yeah, it's totally yeah. a lack of awareness. Like you really think that like if a kid uses an iPad, he's going to become like, autistic or ADHD, whatever. And I'm not saying that there's not a balance that needs to be had. Like I totally believe that. And I'm not saying there isn't things that can happen by too much stimulation or whatever. So like, don't come for me, but there's a balance that can be had. And that's what we try to balance with our kids. Our son can code like that is giving him, in my opinion, a, a gift. Code, yeah. He does little, like the yeah. little code Pattern stuff. Recognition. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Well, sure. it's, yeah. not, it's not coding, but yeah. Oh, it's not? No. Oh, well, whatever. I mean, he makes like his own video game worlds and yeah. stuff. It's like yeah. he has to like be thinking through problem solving using this technology and the tools under, in that creative suite yeah, or whatever a, it would a, be. He's aware of it, yeah. And I think that that is setting him up for 
more success. And I think if I were to, you know, no iPads, you know, you can only do these like learning things on this like one tablet for 30 minutes a day and the TV goes off and like you need to play outside and you need to like play with like wooden blocks or like whatever we're doing. It's like, guys, think about where the world is headed. Like you want your kids healthy balance, of course, and monitored and parental controls and all the things. But like, in my opinion, I want my kids to be able to handle technology because that is where the world is and will continue to be Mm -hmm. forever, Mm -hmm. you know? And like our entire jobs is, I mean, we're essentially in tech. I mean, really, when you think about it, like our industry, our broader industry is is tech. And which a lot of people misunderstand that very few people even like tech is a very broad category that even the people running tech still don't know what they're doing (laughs) because you when you're when you're on the cutting edge of something it's it's you're just kind of making it up as you go and everything we do as a society especially technology is built on top of previous infrastructure so like every once in a while it makes sense to tear the whole system down and start afresh and i think people think that with like web 3 where it's like you know good luck but the web 2 stuff still has a very very long runway we're still in our in infancy in my opinion and this is not going anywhere if it changes it won't be some huge fundamental change that like renders all the engineering skills uh useless oh yeah and um it, it, you just need to be aware you need to be knowledgeable about it and and so many people aren't and i to be fair like i wouldn't either like when i came into this role i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do and then i'm like oh shit this is amazing we're still, I was like, these, my analogy, old analogy I use is like on Facebook, right? When I started using Facebook when I was like, I think a sophomore or freshman in college, I was just like poking girls in my dorm room. And I was like, <laughs> and then fast forward, like, but that was like the extent of the functionality. It was a oh, picture, yeah. text, and you could notify someone. And like now it's like what well, is previously like- before iOS crippled or yeah, Apple crippled them. But, but that was like a huge, the best skill or thing you could do, use to generate business for your small business and looking at what we spent on it i'm like wow that's crazy to think it went from there to this is what it is now yeah. and you have to be and it's really about being comfortable with change because as technology increases the rate of change of which we need to adapt also increases and if you're not adaptable you are going to be a dinosaur like the lens that i view is like if you look at your grandma if like just like anyone's grandma just close your eyes think of like just grandmas right and you would say what would make a grandma progressive like in the year 2022, uh, does she follow your Instagram? <laughs> can she email you or can she t- send a text message, right? So just take, a, take those three things on face value. Like if your grandma can do all three of those things, most of them probably can't. But like that's a very with it. Like, like, that, like that's such a good. That's such a good example. And like just imagine it is the – if you had a friend, like if your friend was like that was their – like that was the upper – like echelon of their technology skill set, you wouldn't be friends with that person. You, you'd have like, they'd be like, who the fuck is this guy? Like living under a rock? Like, so you have to be around. Like, you look, I mean, you just look a lot, like, just look, pay attention to what companies like Roblox are doing. Like, don't look at like the metaverse and all this other stuff. Look at a company like Roblox. Look at who's, who founded it, what their thesis has been for the last 20 years. And then think about what they're going to build over the next 20. It's going to be, and who's going to come into that space. Yeah, and the opportunity it, that's going to yeah. be in that space. Yeah. There's opportunities in jobs yeah. that you don't even know right now. Like when that metaverse is like really a thing. I mean, They'll go to Guys, school there. They'll they'll do everything yes. there, and it won't be weird. Like they're already playing games there. They already yeah. have their currency there. It's not. It might sound weird to someone who's thirty five or definitely fifty or sixty. But they're all my think of it. It's already here, guys. Yeah. Like, and you know what I kind of like think of it as is like I won't name names, but um, like a long time ago, like when I was getting like started in like the online business, like I just started trying to just post about like fitness and educate and like promote the classes I was teaching locally. And that was kind of like the extent of it. And I had so many peers of mine that knew me from like back where I'm from or from, from college or, you know, young adulthood that weren't on social media or like just thought it was like beneath them. Like, Oh, Nancy. And they would like literally say this to me, like you're wasting your you're wasting your time on like Facebook and Instagram, like doing all this stuff. Like, what are you even doing on there? 
And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm building a fucking business, moron. But like, of course, I'm not going to like say that. I, you know, I'm not going to like be like rude because, you know, there. I don't know if I would be considered like a first adopter because I don't think I was that early to the game. Like, there are certain people that are that no, already cashed out and sold for 400 adopter. million, which. No, that's a yeah bad bad example. But yeah, you're that's definitely true. An early adopter. She was first. Um and, but like. It's such a good example to like now those same people who were like, oh, Nancy, what are you fucking doing on social media all the time? Like you're wasting your time. Like, why don't you go like open a gym or whatever? Like talking about just kind of like old school business ideas that like there's this new opportunity online in a virtual space that like I can reach way more people, help way more people and make way more money if I figure out this online thing, which like I couldn't figure out, there was no roadmap, like talking about making it up as you go along. Like I literally had to do that because there was, I could, couldn't look at to anyone and be like, how'd you do this? Like, I need to do that. You know, I had to just figure it out. But then looking back now, you know, after however many years have passed at those same people, now they're all realizing, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't avoid social media. I have to get on social media and recruit clients for social media or build my brand on social media or educate or whatever. And they're so late to the game. I'm like, good luck. Like, But not only that, you tell them what to do and they don't do it. Well, so yeah, no one ever listens, yeah, but it's, it's, it's hard. It is like, hard. The thing is, but my, my point, my point real quick was just that, know. like, like the example you used about the grandmother thing, like if your grandma can like t text, if she can email and if she's on social media, it's like, wow, she's a really cool hip grandma. And it's like in our generation, it's like these people that were dragging their feet or saying that they were too good to be on social media. They think they're like too cool or something because it's like a fad. Like it's not a fad. It's not going anywhere. It's here to stay forever. Mm -hmm. And if you think that technology is going to be like phase its way out, we're going to go back to like the roots or whatever. Seriously, that's not going to happen. And I think restricting my kids from learning technology and being able to operate technology well would only be like beneficial to them will only be beneficial to them. But if I was restricting their use and like making them play outside, no technology, don't learn it. Da, 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 in my mind, that would put them so far behind, just like those business owners or entrepreneurs that are now trying to get, make a Facebook account or Instagram account and now trying to build, build their business when they're so late to the game, they're, they're, they're starting so far behind where the rest of us were that did it in the first place or knew it in the first place or had that foundation of knowledge on social media in the first place. So like, that's just like the point I was trying to make is like, I just think that with balance and parental guidance or, um, you know, having limitations, obviously that technology is a powerful, wonderful, fruitful gift that we can give our children. And we choose to give that to our children. But I mean, we're also in this space for work. So maybe our perspective is different than yeah. and other parents. Yeah, we're working on ways to make it better. I mean, that's the, there's, there's going to be so much opportunity to improve upon everything that's being built right now. And that will be the same of what we build. That will be the same of what everybody else builds. It's just continuous improvement. I would love to mention that, um, Max has always been, bless you, my assistant just sneezed. Mm. Uh, Max has always been a gamer, you know, and people talk about video games, talk shit on video games, about kids using video games and this and that. And I'm not saying there's not dangers with like child predators and all that stuff. Like I get it. And like, you definitely need to like monitor and be aware and all that stuff. Um, but Max, in my opinion, you know, not to like brag on my husband, but like he's probably the smartest person that I've ever met honestly like he's 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 not even like smart it's like his mind is like sort of like a genius mind like the way oh, that it works good. it's just very unique <laughs> you're welcome you're very hours. you're very intelligent i mean he's i'm i'm really smart with the things that i like am really interested in and focused on very in very like slices max is extremely intelligent across the board and everything and can understand very complex things and how they're intertwined and connected and then where they're going, like how they're going to progress and what they're going to become. And it just takes a different mind for that. And he definitely has it. And he was an athlete, obviously a very good athlete, but he was also a gamer, like hardcore gamer, you guys. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing that Still ever am. since you were, I mean, when did you start playing video uh, games? Yeah, I played with my dad when I, at a young age, like, yeah. Yeah. And it didn't ruin his brain. No. Like he's, look at him. I mean, yeah. he's like, Masters from UCLA, B, an MBA, and yeah. 
straight A students, like always had 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 an academic award in college for your academic performance. I yeah, mean, he's just living proof that like you can do both. You can have well, an active lifestyle an, yeah. and you can be into video games or technology or whatever. And it's not like you're going to raise like someone that's going to live in your basement for the rest of your life gaming all day. Well, if like the, your kids yeah. play video games. That's it's the like, biggest, there's a great documentary on Netflix about that exact point was that the guys who found, I think they were found a D and D. I could be butchering this, but they're in LA friends, friends, high school buddies in LA. And they were, they built, I think Dungeons and Dragons, I think maybe it was Diablo. I, I don't play the game, never played the game. It has a huge following. And then they're, 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 their thesis was essentially that like everyone thinks that gamers are losers and like, like shut-ins like but like gaming just like every single thing we do in life is extremely social yeah and it's just that it's kind of having its day and like that was like what i was like i was like oh this is so much fun this is just like life it's different like i would always love to play football but i always love to play video games yeah and those video games were never football i was like fuck the football games like i don't i play this in real life like i also don't want to play that in like you know yeah uh uh these virtual world worlds but um yeah, it's interesting because I think I, I, I had this last time. I had these quotes that hit me on Instagram. I want to save them, and this is relevant here. And this is by Thomas Sowell, who's a great, great, brilliant mind. Um, and he said, it takes considerable knowledge just to realize the extent of your own ignorance. Yes. And I was like, oh, f-. I mean, a lot of stuff he says is like fucking brilliant. But like, that's the way I view intelligence. And it's interesting because I, I appreciate the praise that that you, you, when you say that, it, it, it really makes – me feel really good every time you do but on the other side of that is a lot of the arguments we have is that you think i'm this know-it-all who um you know thinks they're so smart or better than everybody else this is what i say hold on hold on but like but like that's my definition of intelligence my definition of intelligence has nothing to do with actually how much you know about any topic it's about understanding the extent of your own ignorance and that's what you know so. I think it's more like Max's delivery that mm. kind of rubs me the wrong way sometimes. Like his sister said something once that it always like stuck with me because it's really so freaking true. She was like, what did she say exactly? She was like, you know, Max will always, it's like really annoying kind of thing. Like it's like not annoying. She was kind of like laughing about it, but she was like, you know, it's so annoying because like Max, you know, always thinks he knows it all and he knows the right answer and like you don't. And the thing is, is he's usually right. (laughs) And I was like, it's so true. Like Mm. he will correct you. He will like, he's all about like, you look like you're, you and Johnny Depp have a little in common. You're truth seekers. You know what I mean? He just wants logic and truth, you know, and he will, doesn't care who you are. If you say, he's like, I, I used to, I'm from Baltimore. You know what I mean? And like, we don't speak quite perfect English in Baltimore. We miss, mispronounce, <laughs> pronunciate, what is it? Mispronounce. Pro- mispronounce, um, like so many words. And in the beginning of our relationship, I still sort of had that accent. And Max would correct my speech. It would I send what? me. What? About what? If I said a word wrong, you would like kind of mock that I said it wrong. Oh, like when you said, hiors diavors? <laughs> That's a tough <laughs> word, guys. I'd never it's seen it before. Hors <laughs> <laughs> But it's a fr- it's I don't fucking know what French. you're talking about, though. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I, w- I used to say, instead of saying found, I pronounce it fount because that's how we say it in Baltimore. So, like, when we would start dating, and I'd be like, I found, I found this. Like, you found it? I you know, like, like... I don't remember that at all. I never... Yeah. Like, that's weird. No, you definitely did. I don't remember that. And I would just get so like annoyed that he would correct me, but like he just wants Say to, water. you know, he's very, yeah, water, water. is water. Anyway, water. so yeah, he just you is all about because I don't pronounce my ings. Oh, I said, Give me like, an example. What are you doing? No. Yeah, we're going, doing. I don't say doing, going. No, you leave. That's not it. He has like a little Pittsburgh accent. But what they do is they like leave out a word in their sentence. So it'll be like, um, I can't think of a good example right now. But it's something where you you leave out a word. So instead of saying like, um, I, I need to think about it for a second to get a good example. But I know what you mean. You do that. Yeah, I will like call you out on it. But and you weren't the only one that used to call me out on my accent. That's like right. other people Never would too. Yeah. And then I would, like, Baltimore. Yeah. Anyway, um, what else should we talk about here? Maybe we should talk about Johnny Depp now that I brought him up. Yay. What do you think about the case? 
Uh, I think the same that I thought about when it was going on. Not that much. Max doesn't care. But this is why, okay, this is what I wanted to, maybe this will be the last topic we talk about because this is what. We should end on a good one, but yeah, we can talk about this. This is a good one. Okay. People are interested in Johnny Depp. Still? I think so. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, okay, so new update. Amber Heard's team basically like tried to call a bunch of technicalities that were all fucking bullshit. Like juror number 15, Okay, the juror number 15 was summoned or whatever it's called to this uh, case. But there were two people in the same house with the exact same name and the exact same, obviously, address. So when they were summoned for jury duty, they sent one of those two people, which was the younger one. And I guess they tried to claim that the whole case should be thrown out because really it was the older one that was summoned. Well, then Judge Penny, who now is... You know, she just, like, was taking names. Like, she was so... I think she secretly hates Amber. I'm so serious. She basically said that the birth date was never on the jury summons thing, whatever it's called, and they didn't break any rules and whatever. She just shut down all of her claims. Like, they were trying to get the whole trial to be a mistrial and then go through it all again. Like, who would want to go through it again? Uh, the lawyers would. Well, probably... I mean, <laughs> Maybe her the, lawyers, the, the but judges, I don't think his the lawyers. people making a ton of money to do fucking nothing. Those people would actually like to do No, it. Uh, John, they're doing, I don't know what her lawyers are doing, but Johnny's lawyers did a great job. I would hire them yeah. as our lawyers. Oh, yeah, great. They crushed it. Yeah. He's a little ignorant to this topic. Talk about truth seeker. You should seek some truth here because you're a little over your skis. <laughs> He's a little over his skis. About the whole thing. I mean, Johnny's team worked their ass off, okay? I'm oh, sure. You just Camille very, Vasquez. And, and you, you objectively just consumed the whole thing without any preconceived opinions or notions and Wh zero bias. 100% I did. Oh, jeez. Zero that's, bias? That's what makes my opinion so good, I think. Listen, oh, of course... Wait okay. a second. Seriously. What does? That you're unbiased? I'm not biased. I went into the Hold case 100% unbiased. I stand by that. I knew who Johnny Depp was, never seen any of his movies aside from Blow, which I saw once, like 20 years ago or whatever. And I didn't see it because he was in it. I just saw it because of someone put it on TV. Amber Heard didn't know who she was, never has seen any of her movies. Or I didn't know what she looked like. I never knew that they were married. I never knew that there were abuse allegations. I never knew about the Washington Post op-ed. I mean, when I tell you I don't follow pop culture, I'm telling you I don't follow pop culture. I don't know anything about the Kardashians. I don't give a fuck about any celebrities. It's just not my jam. Unless your name is Britney Spears. Then I know everything about you. But that's only because I've been a fan since I was like 14. Okay, we'll talk about that another time. But the whole Johnny Depp thing, I went in completely unbiased. I went in thinking this chick was probably beat up and I'm interested to see what's going on here. I came out of it with a total like, I feel like it was like a, um, like a aha moment of what a true narcissist looks like, behaves like, who also has like this other borderline personality disorder and how men are totally victims too of domestic violence. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. You're wrong about that. I'm going to say you're wrong. 100% wrong. Mm -hmm. when, when have I ever talked about Johnny Depp before to you? Like, the, you know, on, I don't want to watch the, movies. Bias is not me. You, they, did you talk about someone prior to? I'm not a them? fan. I'm not a Johnny Depp fan. But that's not what a bias means. Bias means you're taking a side, right? Yeah, you're, I went in. I went in honestly thinking that Amber got beat up. Yeah. Because I just assumed, just like everyone and else, I, I that a woman that. is like you know usually the one that gets beat up, beat up, which was my own ignorance. You know what I mean? And then after hearing the trial, I mean, and and maybe he thinks that like Johnny put on this show because he's this great actor, blah blah he blah. blah that, whatever. That's a, that, I mean, maybe that's a, that's but a like, wrinkle that no one talks about, right? No, it's I'm like everyone. This person. I mean, I didn't see it. All I saw was the one sided. I didn't see anything that was in support of any of Amber's claims. It was that it seemed like everything that was was uh, portrayed out there was on his side. And I'm not saying he rightfully lost. I think or because the truth was on his <laughs> okay, side. Maybe like maybe, but like it was just wild to me that like everyone like swooned over Johnny. And I'm like, he like his like testimony, but you're biased. There's a bias. Right? I didn't like, think he was saying, sexy before the trial. 
I never thought it's, twice that, about Johnny weird to Depp. Think he's sexy after the trial because I've he's never not at his top looked at him. Right that's now. the thing. Like, where would I have seen him before? I don't read magazines. I, I don't mean, look at websites. It's like a weird... I don't watch the movies. Like, but when like I watched Blow, celebrity. I wasn't like, oh my god, Johnny Depp, he's so hot. I'm going to take his side for the rest of his life, no matter what happens. Like, no. no. Yeah, but you're, it's, it's like it's someone who, who she's also beautiful, very, very high level at what they do. And what so you they think, do is getting people to believe that they're somebody else, like a pirate. Now I'm in getting the heated. Caribbean. I'm getting hot inside. And then, like, they're like, "Oh yeah," there's. They just don't think that. Oh, you know what? Maybe he was playing a part, or maybe he was a victim. Could be both, right? I'm not saying those things are me. I'm. I'm not saying only. Only could be one. I don't have this all or nothing thinking where it's like Team John ain't Team Man. I didn't have this all or nothing thinking until it's, I went through the trial yeah. and I looked at the trial like I was a juror <laughs> that was also <laughs> looking at social media and, <laughs> and that shit, yeah. And the thing is, is I don't think he was like completely like innocent like i'm sure he did stuff that he regrets or shouldn't have done but like she was clearly the aggressor like and i just don't think that you can punish someone if there's an aggressor and someone's like push 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 and then finally the other person pushes back i don't think that the person that pushes back should be punished like the person that was egging him out on the whole time which is what i think happened that uh, that appeared to be the thing it's like she lo- loved fighting and loved the whole like fighting make a, making up thing and she's like nuts 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 yeah. but and then you know he would get pushed to the point where he would maybe lash out a little bit at her i don't think he would i don't think he like hit her though maybe he like shoved her away or something but like mm. i mean he had like bruises on his face she like admitted on tape she punched him yeah my I mean, thing is it takes two to tango like it's there's not, oh my like, God. it's just, I don't know. It just it seemed like there was a lot. You don't know the whole backstory, okay? Oh, he, he had I a rough not, childhood, I mean, I first of all. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like, that's. You just don't get that, it. Like, relevant to, yes. like. Yes. That's, that's a relevant thing. So, like, you could say, like, oh. Like, I didn't understand how that's a relevant thing. It's like you're, you're talking about stuff that's irrelevant to no. the. No. Every relationship. Crime, right? No. No, the relationship dynamic that anyone is in, the reason why you pick people to be your person, like can stem from behavior patterns and relationships that you had with like your parents as a child. Mm -hmm. And that was the point of bringing that into it. His mom was essentially just like Amber, abusive, manipulative, like called them names, like all the things that basically Amber did hit them. Yeah. And then he, I mean, he basically married his, his mom essentially. And I mean, I can totally relate to that. I think that's very common and and happens all the time. Yeah, I don't know. It's I just have a weird and when you and I argue about this a lot with like the social sciences, and it's like it's just like a very convenient way of explaining the the present from the past. Like, so it's like how would that be relevant, like to like an actual crime or like an event taking place? You're like, well, it's happened because of my mom. It's like, well, wait a second. That doesn't mean that it's okay or that – this is kind of like we were arguing about the Elon thing the other day. Oh, God. Don't get us started on but, Elon. And it's like, it is like the fact that he has, what, seven kids from five different women or whatever it is? nine from three. And whatever seven. it is. Like, and it's like and it's like – and then you, you, because you like him, you're like, oh, yeah, that's just the way he is. He's no, like, it's oh, not like, that second. I like him. It's like you, you think they have this favoritism towards these people. Everyone does. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying everyone no, exists I'm some saying sort of bias. I, I think I do a good job at like looking at things from other people's perspectives. And hearing the things that he's talked about of like population and like the birth rate going down and he like really believes that's like hurting the planet or whatever, hurting like our 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 rate of survival as a civilization. I believe that he really believes that. So from his perspective, I understand why he's spreading his seed to many women having many, many, many children where he's probably not going to be a great dad because I don't think being a great dad is necessarily his top concern. I think spreading more population is his goal. I don't agree with that. I wouldn't personally do that. But from, from his perspective, if those things are true, which I think they are, I understand why he's doing the things that he's doing. I'm not going to judge him for that. I don't give a fuck what he does. He also it's has the a mind. Thing anyone's ever heard of, right? Like, what? Like you, you, like you could, you could, both can be true, right? He could be Did one it? of the smartest people on the planet, and he also have the dumbest fucking opinions and takes on things. Like if on you, some like things. you genuinely think talking about father to me, like in my opinion, being a father or just a leader in general, like a, a good person, but someone to be, to be aspirational, right? 
is really important. Like, mm-hmm. be the hero of your own story. Yeah. That, to me, is what, what would be the ultimate kind of downfall of society. Not that I think that's anytime soon. But, like, fatherhood and being a parent is a superpower, right? So, to, uh, traveling to Mars, not a superpower, but, right? But All these things. You're putting... If you're, like, if you're an engineer and you fucking fly rocks to space and you think that the current population boom, which has been up, I don't know, six billion people over the last fifty years or whatever, is the is the downfall of our society I'm versus raising seven kids, nine, nine kids, nine seven kids. of which probably have a shitty dad, two of which don't. And I'm not like, saying I agree with day. him. I'm not saying he's right. I'm saying yeah, everyone lives in their own version of their own reality, yeah, the, and they believe that reality That's is real and true. Correct. That's I'm not just the point saying. That I'm making though the point that I'm making no, is that because you're t- people you're telling you're saying that he's wrong for doing those things and it's dumb. From his perspective, it's not dumb. From his perspective, this is something that he feels very strongly about. I'm not going to judge someone for that. He's not hurting me. He's not hurting like children physically or in any other ways like that I know of. If it was That's something like point, though, that, then yeah. it would be a different story. But That's, like if he just wants to, I mean, I grew up like basically without a dad around and I turned out fine. So yeah, he's like, that's an anecdote. Like the, my, the point, that's not the point that I'm making. The point that I'm making is that people who, whether they're actors, whether they're business, whether they have money, whether they uh, have a skill, whatever it is, whether they were early looking at a lot of these digital marketing dipshits, like they were early in Instagram. Let me sell my secrets. We, well, as that's society, a different thing. It's not, it's, but the, my, my point is that we place it, 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 we like place an inordinate amount of faith in these people. We care so much about what they're doing with the thinking, all this other stuff. And it's like, it's dumb. That's the dumbest thing you could possibly do, in my opinion. That's very judgmental. Not, for no, you. no, I'm just saying, like, like, but the thing is, like, whether it's just, just say. It, that's a judgmental. Correct. But yeah, but how? But this is why. This is why I get when when I talk about like Max being a know it all, and then like I like gripe on him about it or whatever. It's not that I gripe on him for being a know it all. I gripe on him for how he delivers the information, like he's doing right now. He's like, that's just dumb. It's dumb. Well, I mean, it's 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 not dumb to him. Like it's his perspective. I'm not saying that because I have some infatuation or fanfare with Elon. I don't give a fuck Listen, about Elon. I'm, I'm just, it could be anyone. It could be like, it could be our next door neighbor. Hey, if he wants to have nine kids with three different women, I don't care. Like, good for you. So Do you whatever think, you want. But, but, but just, to be, just to be clear, my point is having many children out of wedlock is, is a much more harmful thing to society than whatever he's doing, than like having electric cars, being able to go to Mars. Like, th- like at a certain point, you have to be like, hey, like, these things are more important because they're very immediate. Like these collective things that we agree upon as a society. I don't think we do agree we collectively in society about uh, much but, but these days. We, but we, I think we do, right? Because society's functioning at a very high level. Like, like we, we, we got to where we are through a lot of coordinated effort, right? And I think we'll progress over there. And I think people are worried about slipping back. And I think that people have always wor- been worried about slipping back at every point in time. They're like, oh, this is the wrong way. And eventually, I believe in I believe in efficient markets. I believe that like water eventually meets its level. And, you know, on average, we're going to progress in a lot of areas. So but to sit there and be like, oh, like, it's just it's just I just that really drives that really I, very few things rub me the wrong way. You know, that that was one thing that was just like, Oh, you're just believing him because you like him. Like, if anybody else came on, if you had a friend who had that same situation, you'd be like, "Fuck, I can't be friends with this guy." No, I just, I literally, I literally just said, if my next door neighbor did that same thing, I don't. What am I going to say about it? View. Do you think I, I, I'm interested in him because I'm much more of like a Johnny Depp kind of like person, not like an Elon. He's way too nerd alert for me. Yeah. I want a creative, free. I want to get you a little more free. A little more. mm, What is that supposed to mean? Like spiritual, I guess. Like free connected, a bird. like free. You're not like. All right, well, let's go do some ayahuasca. I'll go in your transcendental. What's it called? Book me an appointment with your. I would love to see you do it like a, a hypnotherapy That's what I'm session. About. What's yeah. The, what's the what's the Damien the Bertrand? No, no, no. I'm yeah. What's his name? But like, what's the the there's theme? past life regression? That's yeah. Like, yeah, or you can just like you can do a past life regression, or you can just get under hypnosis and see what happens, which is always the best time because you just don't have any expectations, and that's the best way to go into it. Having no expectation of what you're looking for, you just let what happens happen, and those are the most life changing experiences, I think, 
But I don't think you would do it. Why not? You're just, you're too logical. Like you have to just like let it flow and just like Mm. be with like the universe and the energy and like go with it. And I feel like you're so resistant. Like you just try to compartmentalize everything into logic that those type of people aren't, aren't, they don't, I, I, maybe they are successful in hypnotherapy. I don't know. I'm not a hip- hypnotherapist, but I would imagine that it doesn't yield like as good results because you like fight the intuition or whatever that's, you know, you fight like mm. kind of the flow that's coming when you just have to like be very open-minded. And I guess I don't think that you're an open-minded enough, mm. but I bet you if you did some ayahuasca, you would be. So maybe you should do that yeah. and then go on a little journey. That's not for me. That I'm stuff. I'm on my journey. That stuff's not for me, but only because I've had serotonin, serotonin syndrome and I think I'd probably die if I did it, but you should, I mean, I think you should explore. You should set it up. Really? Would you do it? Yeah. I want to see what's Luckily, living you. in California, we're allowed to do all this shit. Oh, That's my favorite dude. when people think I'm an influencer. God, I just hate that. Like, oh, that worst. triggers me so dude, much. Like, don't me. call me. And people will message me that like know me too. And they'll be like, Hey, like, you know, I own this business, whatever. We've been looking for influencers. We really would love to get you on board. And it's just so hard for me to write back and be like, I'm not a fucking influencer. Influencers promote other people's and brands products. That is not me. I've never done that one time. I am a new, I am an entrepreneur that owns brands just because I have, just because I have a social media presence does not mean I'm an influencer. Okay, an influencer is a job. It's like a sales position. You're like an affiliate. You just push products on your audience to get them to buy it, make it look appealing, make it look like you're using it. Never have I done that. The only products and platforms and apps I talk about are the ones that I own. And that's what I share. Anything else that I share, a brand of my shoes, whatever, it's not me influencing. It's literally just sharing what I bought on my own without any strings attached at all. And... That just kills me. People think I'm an influencer. I'm not yeah. an influencer. Okay. Thank it, you. it kills me when people try to get me into their multi-level marketing scheme. Oh yeah. Like which is like last week, right? I was meeting a guy. And he's like talking. And kids are hitting it off, and and you know, two conversations in, he's like, "Oh, you gotta check out this thing." <laughs> and it's like, "Yeah, I'm making like five, six grand a, a, a month on this." Oh like yeah. My primary source income. There are guys above me that are making twenty thousand a month. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> Ah, oh, dude. No thanks. Like you just had to ruin it. Like, like. I thought we were really creating a friendship yeah, here, dude. It's like just stop. Just I just said to wear like a sign or something that says like no soliciting. So true. <laughs> Same with my DMs, no soliciting. Yeah. All right, that was fun. That was a good note to end on. Thanks so much. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Love Episode you. two in the books. Are we gonna have this, the? When's the first one going live? I don't know. We got to get the graphics and stuff on it. Get some feedback. Get some more questions. Get some more questions. We'll do another Q&A next time. Talk about finances. Uh, Okay. (laughs) All right. We love you guys. See you next time. Mm